you're having quite the moment and I love watching you on screen. You're a true character actress. Talk to us about what preparation went into preparing for this role. Mm. Well, Nisi, I think, is larger than life. And I I know you probably won't believe this, but I'm not <laughs> as outspoken or as much of an extrovert as Nisi is. So there was a lot of thinking about, um, you know, how she enters a room, what, what energy she's carrying with her, um, how, what kind of mom she is. I think she's a little bit of a different mom than I am. Um, and really... There was a lot of me forgiving Nisi for her actions. Um, when I read this, when I read the book, I was reading it as someone just, you know, an outsider. And then when I read the script, I'm reading it now as Nisi. So there's a part of me that while I'm reading Nisi as a character in the book, I'm kind of judgmental of her actions and her decisions, right? But then once I have to play her, I can't be judgmental of her and I have to figure out why she makes those decisions. So a lot of it had to be with like, okay, Put yourself in Nisi's shoes. Why is she making this decision? I think everything Nisi does is out of love. Now, she's sometimes misguided, and sometimes she makes the wrong decision. But she is a woman who loves, because she's so larger than life, I think she loves really big, too. So she feels love on a large scale, but she feels betrayal on a large scale. And she feels loyalty on a large scale. So, you know, every decision is based on this, like, larger-than-life persona. Right. And so many people, I feel, like, can resonate with your character and even just the story in general, right? Talk to us about what it was like working with Samuel. Did you have any scenes with Samuel L. Jackson? What did he share with you in terms of advice? Talk to us a little bit about what that was like for you. You've worked with so many people. Viola Davis, which I loved you in. How to Get Away with Murder. Shout out to you for killing it on that. But what advice did um, Samuel, Samuel provide to you when you were working alongside of him in this project? Um, I wouldn't necessarily call it advice because Sam doesn't phrase anything in that way. Um, a lot of times he would say stuff like, y'all need to shut up and get to work. Or maybe not shut up. But, you know, like his whole thing is like, let's do the work. Right. Let's try it. Like, stop complaining. Let's right. do the work. Um, there was one, for some reason, sometimes I'd get a little caught in the, the his grandeur, right? Yes. So, yes, yes. And so I had this scene with him. I'm sitting across the table from him, and I'm trying to, like, talk to my uncle. <laughs> and there was a part, like, at one point, my mind drifted, mm -hmm. and I was like, this is Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> like, he's so rap. Like, I got him sitting here listening to me. And then, of course, I forgot my line. And he was like... Uh-uh, come on now, like, like, come, like, bring it back, like, what you doing, you drifting, you drifting, but he's like that, he will roast you, he will roast you in the moment and just get you to forget, like, forget that I'm Sam Jackson, come on, let's, let's play, um, I've actually known he and his wife for many years now, and even though I know them, I was still, like, nervous to work with him, but he makes, he, he like, throws you right off of that nervousness, you know, and gets real very quickly, He's just great. He's wonderful. He's like everything you want him to be. Like, you know when you have icons and you want them to be like, please live up to? He is, he's one of those people. He lives up to it, for sure. I, before I let you go, it's Women's History Month. I have to ask, as a mother, a woman who's killing it in your field, killing it in motherhood, talk to us about what drives you and what, what do you fall on or what do you lean on to get you through, to keep you going and not giving up? Well, I mean, I think my kids, and actually my mom, my own mother, and then how she sacrificed, like, everything for us. Like, when I, it, there's so many stories that are dribbling out now. As they're getting older, they tell us more stories, you know, and you find out, like, wait, you did that? What? Exactly. Girl, I don't know what is up with these women. Out of control. They be quiet, and then all of a sudden, right. So a lot of stories are coming out now. My, my mom telling me about things that she did to, like, just make sure we kept going. It's heartbreaking, some of it. Um, and so I think about that, and I think about instilling that kind of commitment and drive in my girls. Obviously, I have two daughters, so it's like, you know, it's it's a weird time to be a woman now. I want them to be independent. I want them to be all those things, but I also want them to be respectful and empathetic, and I want them to care about other people, and I want them to realize, even though they're the center of my universe, that they're not the center of the universe, um, and that's important. I think um, I, I, I imbue them with this feeling. It's funny, because Ptolemy, this, this series is about, so much about 
blood family and chosen family, and my daughters have a lot of chosen family. I make them feel like everyone, anyone can be your uncle, your cousin, your auntie. You treat people with respect and know that like, yeah, if somebody comes into our lives and we love them, we love them like blood. There is no separation for us until that person or if that person does something that completely, uh, you know, yeah, makes that's us out of line, yeah. that's out of line. But until then, that is family. The world is your family, and treat them as such. They're not, you know. And I think that's a, like a, a good way to to think of everyone. That way, you don't think of somebody as an outsider or other or this or that. Like we are family. You know what I'm saying? So, and I know my. I have so many, I'm Jamaican, so I have so many aunts and uncles who ain't my aunts and uncles, you know what I'm saying, like, girl, I'd be asking my mom, like, how am I related to, <laughs> and she's like, don't ask me no questions, they don't even, they're like, don't ask me that. And then we find out, like you said, years later, they're really one our uncle or our cousin, but we were like, well, yeah. we didn't know, so, hey, uncle and cousin in my eyes. Exactly. You deliver, thank you so much, love your spirit, congratulations.